Good morning, it's Jeffrey Christian of CPM Group. It's about 8.35 in the morning here on Tuesday, the 18th of June in New York. I want to take a step away from precious metals today and talk a little bit about nuclear power and uranium and uranium mining. Um, these are not subjects that are new to us. In fact, when I started writing about commodities when I was in university in 1975, 76, uh, a lot of my early work on commodities research had to do with energy markets, energy technologies, and nuclear power. Um, as some of you know, when I got out of university, I came to New York. I became a business journalist. I was writing about oil and gas and metals. And one of the things I wrote, I tried to start a newsletter uh, for my, my company I worked for on electric vehicles in 78. Uh, and then I took the information we gathered for that newsletter, and I wrote a book on electric vehicles in 1979. Um, I'd been involved in researching uranium for a long time. When uh, World Guide to Battery Powered Road Transportation came out in 1980, um, one of the reviewers said I was a shill for the uranium industry uh, because you need a nuclear power if you wouldn't have enough electricity to power electric vehicles. It's kind of funny because I, while I was familiar with uranium closely, uh, professionally as well as intellectually interested in it, um, I was not a shill for the uranium industry. And in fact, I was an uh, outspoken critic of several uh, government policies sponsored by the uranium mining industry and others um, at the time. Uh, but so we've known about nuclear power for a long time. We've studied it. We've done reports uh, uh, episodically on uranium and uranium mining for clients. We've had uranium mining clients. We have uranium mining clients. Uh, we're familiar with this all along. It's now Uranium mining and nuclear power are enjoying at least a promotional rena renaissance uh, right now. People are interested in it. They're seeing the spot uranium price, which is not the price that most uranium is sold at, uh, rise, and they're getting kind of gung-ho. There's also some powerful uh, movements toward bringing nuclear power, and there's recently been some uh, promotional information about a, a new nuclear plant that is being built in Wyoming, uh, financed by Bill Gates. Um, CPM Group sees nuclear power as a critical missing component of the solution to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and humankind's contributions to global warming. However, nuclear power has been uh, stigmatized by outdated and inaccurate social and political attitude, uh, attitudes. It's much safer uh, than it used to be. The technology has changed dramatically. I'll show you a, a table toward the end of this presentation where you can see that. Um, but society and politicians have not granted the acknowledgement of that reality. As a result, the International Energy Agency's stated policy scenario, i.e., it's most likely to occur as little growth in nuclear power output projected for the next quarter century. This is the IEA's uh, estimates of where humankind gets its energy between now, uh, well, goes back to 2000 uh, and 2050. The red line at the top is oil. And you can see in 2050, oil is still the single most uh, largest source of energy for humanity. Natural gas is up there rivaling it by 2050. Uh, renewable solar, wind, and, and hydropower, and a few other things are starting to get up there. They displace coal as the third largest source of energy sometime after 2040. The dotted line is the carbon dioxide intensity of uh, energy output. And the yellow line toward the bottom is nuclear. And you can see it's pretty much flatlining. That's sad because it is uh, perhaps 
the best place to get large volumes of electricity that don't emit carbon dioxide. And as I said, the technology has changed dramatically over the last uh, 40 years, but has gone largely un un unrecognized. It's much more efficient. It's much safer now. We have a range of smaller reactor technologies that further enhance the attractiveness of nuclear power. Sasol in South Africa, fair disclosure, I'm a shareholder of it. Sasol has some really very interesting small nuclear uh, reactor technologies. Uh, the previous South African government, uh, headed by Mr. Zuma, was willing to spend $5 billion or so on outdated Russian nuclear technology, ignoring the better technology that existed at home within South Africa because he was a pal of Putin's. Nuclear power is the best available technology, as I said, for providing future energy with zero greenhouse gas emissions. There are issues about nuclear waste, but reprocessing spent fuel would effectively preclude the need for new uranium mining, allow for an intelligent, informed, efficient, and cost-effective way for dealing with that waste. And examples of this have existed in France, Russia, and other countries for decades. The majority of electricity in France comes from nuclear power, and the French nuclear in energy industry, in collaboration with the government, ha recycles its waste, doesn't need new uranium to fuel its power plants. If you allowed reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel, you can preclude the need for new uranium mines. So we're very interested in nuclear power, not so much interested in uranium mines. Although, fair disclosure, I personally own stock in some uranium mines because the value of those uranium mines in terms of their equity prices have little to do with economic reality and a lot to do with hype in the market. People are interested in nuclear power, ergo they're interested in uranium, ergo they're buying uranium stock. And, you know, one of them is like five or six times what it was when I bought it. Now, the prohibition in the United States to reprocessing spent fuel came in in the 1970s in the, toward the end of the first era of nuclear power plants. And at that time, the government was very much pro-nuclear power. We were very much dependent on imported oil. Uh, our oil and gas industries were less developed than they were, and coal. Uh, and the, the, industry, the government wanted to see nuclear power prior to Three Mile Island in the late 70s. The Western mining interests, the uranium mining interests specifically, put pressure on the U.S. government. They said, if you want us to invest in new uranium mines, you have to prohibit reprocessing spent fuel. We don't want to compete with cost-effective, reprocessed spent fuel. So under the guise that reprocessing the fuel would create a lot of um, extra uranium and plutonium that could be uh, stolen by terrorists, the U.S. government in the mid-1970s prohibited reprocessing spent fuel. As a result, we have mountains a spent fuel stored in various locations while we've spent 40 plus years uh, arguing about where to bury it for uh, in how to bury it so that it's safe for the next 10,000 years. France doesn't have that problem. They reprocess and reuse the spent fuel. So there are ways around it, but the realities of nuclear power and reprocessing fuel have been ignored due to social and political opposition to nuclear power. This is a table that shows you in 1980 the amount of U.S. utility-level electricity production and in 2022. In 1980, the U.S. generated 1.2 trillion megawatt-hours of electricity. 
nuclear power accounted for about 21.6% of that, or 251 billion kilowatt hours. By 2022, electricity demand and output in the United States had risen to 4.2 trillion kilowatt hours. Nuclear power generation had risen to 772 billion kilowatt hours. It represented 18.2% of the electricity being generated. If you go back two years earlier to 2020, it was still around 20, 21% of power, but we've seen a surge in wind power and, and, and solar power over the last several years. Okay, so pay attention to this. The U.S. has seen an increase of more than 200% in the power generated by nuclear power plants since 1980. And there has been one nuclear power plant that has come online during that time. The existing power plants, all built prior to 1980, all scheduled to be obsolete by now, are by and large still operating and have often, most many of them have been redesigned, re-engineered, new equipment. They burn a higher uh, power uh, of uranium uh, and they generate more electricity, 200% more electricity than they were doing 42 years ago with the same equipment. Safer, more powerful, more efficient, more cost effective with no carbon dioxide uh, exhaust. That's how the nuclear industry has changed, although society hasn't kept up with it. That's all I have for now. Um, I'll be back on Friday. We'll probably talk about precious metals. Uh, next week on June 27th, we're going to have an open forum for our clients where you can send in questions. If you want to send in questions, send them to info at cpmgroup.com. Uh, we'll send out a, a circular to email to our clients at some point saying uh, with the details for signing into that open forum. If you want to become an, uh, a client so that you can participate in that open forum, uh, go to our website, cpmgroup.com and buy some of our research, even if it's like $160 platinum, palladium, rhodium, silver, or gold yearbook. You become a client. You can participate in the open forum. You can ask us questions. And then in the middle of July, we'll issue our platinum yearbook. Again, you can go to our website, a lot of free reads, free videos, other things. You can learn about what all we can do. You can buy some of our research if you want. You can send an email to info at cpmgroup.com and say, hey, I would like to use CPM Group as a research source and a consultant so that I can get good information, accurate information, unbiased information, no conspiracy theories that don't exist type information, explanations about really how these markets work. And CPM Group can help me manage my exposure to precious metals and commodities so that I make better decisions and perhaps improve my, the performance of my commodity investments. That's all for now. Take care. Have a good week. Stay cool if you're in the United States or Europe where we're having massive heat waves. And stay warm if you're in Australia or South Africa. And we'll talk to you later in the week. Try to do something good for everybody while I'm gone. Take care.